So hi everyone and welcome to this video on uh, an interpretation of how we view the certainty equivalent and the risk premium and we're going to sort of transform the concepts that we've learned about these uh, in the past video into a concept known as the rate of return. And this is very typical in terms of uh, the world of finance, wherein you typically see a lot of rates rather than the raw return itself. Although you can think of uh, these concepts as uh, almost interchangeable in some respect. This is uh, actually the last video that we're going to have for this particular module on financial decision making under uncertainty. And the next video will be the very first video in our, um, in our module wherein we actually start to derive the investment decisions. And we're gonna use a couple of criteria for that investment decision. So let's begin. So if you recall from the last video, we discussed a, a, quite a deep dive on the certainty equivalent and the risk premium. And we said that these two concepts are very related and that um, the, uh, I alluded to the fact that they could be expressed in terms of their rates of return. So let's go a bit on the theory on that. So the certainty equivalent again is like a, almost like a bribe to uh, to give a person a, a certain amount of wealth. So it's like an option that the person could take, which is a certain amount of wealth, which is less than the expected value of the wealth. Uh, but um, it's a sure or a certain wealth, right? It's a sure or a certain wealth. And typically it's, uh, it's an amount that would make them indifferent between taking the gamble and taking that sure amount of money. And that also allows us to calculate the concept of the risk premium. So if you recall, via Jensen's inequality, which we discussed before, you know that the utility uh, that you obtain with your initial wealth plus the expected uh, value of the payoff is greater than the expected utility of your wealth plus the payoff, right? So that's, uh, that was the equation that characterized Jensen's inequality. And by that definition of the certainty equivalent, uh, we derive uh, we can derive this sort of form, or we derive this sort of form, which is um, again this is that utility form, and then the expected utility. Again, um, th there would be some certainty equivalent that would make uh, a person indifferent. So that's why it's an equal sign between partaking in the gamble like this one, wherein you have uh, some uncertain payoff here and a certain um, sure payoff. And one way wherein we expressed um, the certainty equivalent, so this certainty equivalent can be expressed as just the expected value of the payoff less the risk premium, right? So um, that's why we have this one here. So this form here is just basically equal to that form inside of the box. So that was something that we learned from the last video. So Together, in reality, these things imply that, okay, so, um, so these things imply simply that uh, the expected, uh, sorry, uh, the, the implication of these things really lie in the fact that we can sort of um, transform Jensen's inequality, or at least the concept in, of Jensen's inequality in terms of some representation of the risk premium and the certainty equivalent. So we know that this expected utility uh, uh, form here is equal to this one, right? And uh, you, you get that again, because a certainty equivalent will make you indifferent between you taking the gamble and then you getting that sure amount of money and you can just rewrite this as this form here. And you know that um, this equality will still, uh, this inequality will still hold because uh, we're just using a sort of a proof uh, in this statement here. Okay, so let, uh, for, for this, we're gonna start to introduce this concept called the rate of return. And then we're gonna let R tilde uh, be equal to the payoff over the initial wealth. So R tilde is equal to, Z, which is the payoff, right, payoff, and W naught is the initial wealth, initial wealth, okay. So the risky payoff Z tilde can be expressed as some random rate of return, right? And it's a percentage of the initial wealth. 
So in essence, you could think of it like if you just manipulate this formula, right? So if R tilde is equal to Z tilde over W naught, then this is just equal to uh, Z tilde is equal to R tilde times W naught or some proportion of the initial wealth, right? So that's the expected value. That, I'm sorry, that's the payoff. And you can conclude that if you take the expected value of both sides of this, that's the expected value Z tilde, that's just equal to um, the, because we know for certain what W naught is, so that we can take that to the side. So that's W naught times the expected value of R tilde or the expected rate of return, right? But we also have this concept that we can also introduce this concept of RF. And RF is just your certainty equivalent divided by W naught. Now remember, the, the certainty equivalent is some certain outcome, right? By the name itself, it's some sure um, amount of money that you will receive that can make you indifferent between taking the gamble. Hence, if you were to take the option of a certain equivalent, uh, say that that was the option that you would opt to take, then in essence, um, uh, that is a sure wealth and it has a corresponding rate and you can view that rate as a risk-free rate or it's like a guaranteed rate of return. So the certain equivalent, of course, is some proportion of your initial wealth. And because it's given in certainty, the, what, whatever proportion that ends up being is essentially a guaranteed rate of return because there is no risk to that particular investment if you're, or a particular option if you were to take that. So again, similar to before, you can think of the certainty equivalent as just merely RF, which is a risk-free rate, um, which we compute as the certainty equivalent divided by the initial wealth times W naught. Similar manipulation to the formula as before. Therefore, by definition, RF is that uh, certain rate of return that makes an individual indifferent between having RF or facing a risky return, which is R tilde. So RF is a risk. So this is, again, a risk-free rate, risk-free. But R tilde is a risky rate, right? Uh, is a risky rate. So we can also derive a sort of uh, a, a rate here for pi, which is pi R. And uh, that's, again, some proportion of initial wealth. And what we can do is we can manipulate the formulas that we've been having earlier and express this in terms of our rates of return. So we can express um, the equations that we've been having so far as uh, their counterparts in the rates of return. So if you remember, uh, it used to be this one had, um, this is W naught plus the certainty equivalent, right? Uh, Z W naught. Then this is just um, the expected value of Z tilde, right? Uh, and uh, W naught plus this. But again, you can re-express it as just, uh, this is the same as W naught times one plus the expected rate of return, right? Which is the expected value of the payoff. So these two things are similar, like you can express it that way. In a similar way, if you were to choose the certain amount of wealth, which is the certainty equivalent, then it's essentially your sure wealth times one plus the risk-free rate, which is the rate you get from uh, getting that certain amount of money. And that corresponds to basically this part. Then as we said earlier, you could express the, the certainty equivalent as some sort of term containing uh, the risk premium, which is exactly what this form is. So these two things here are equal, right? And they're just the same re-expression. And by Jensen's inequality, we know that this side of the equation, right, this side of the equation is greater than the other side. Right, by Jensen's inequality, and we can manipulate uh, it. So if you look at, since they're both evaluated to essentially the same utility function, you can think of the terms inside of the utility function and sort of rearrange it. That, and that you, you sort of figure out that in general, the expected rate of return is generally greater than the risk-free rate. And it stems again from the definition of a certainty equivalent. The certainty equivalent is, um, because it's a certain prospect, you you are willing to take that a certain prospect and even lose out of it on uh, that on the expected rate of return 
because uh, the expected rate of return is a risky prospect, right? Or whatever the gamble will entail, it's some risky prospect. So you, you would be willing to pay uh, a slightly a bit less for that and then get that return uh, and then just opt for the risk-free rate. And that's the reason that uh, this sort of proof holds that the expected rate of return is generally greater than the risk-free rate. Because if the risk-free rate were greater than the expected rate of return, then uh, a rational person should just choose the risk-free investment. Because if it has a higher rate of return, then um, there is zero risk and you get a higher uh, return than potentially you could get with a risky prospect. Then it's, uh, it's no deliberation, really. You just take the risk-free prospect, if that is the case, although quite rare. So for a risk-averse individual, the certainty equivalent of the risky payoff is lower than the expected value, right? As we said. And also by the definition of a certainty equivalent, again, this is just rewriting this uh, sort of thing. Okay, so um, that's this assertion. And we know that by Jensen's inequality, this thing holds, right? So if the uh, individual's wealth is at risk, then the maximum percentage of wealth a risk-averse individual will be willing to pay to remove the risk is essentially the difference between the expected rate of return and the risk-free rate. And essentially, that's what, score, that's what corresponds the risk premium. Because again, as we said, the risk premium is essentially the difference between the expected value of the payoff and the certainty equivalent. So it would uh, automatically follow that essentially the proportion of the risk premium as, as compared to the initial wealth is just equal to the expected rate of return less the risk-free rate. So uh, quite an intuitive explanation. So uh, there is something to be had on the magnitude of pi. So the magnitude of the, uh, the insurance or the risk premium depends on the individual's degree of risk aversion. So in general, this is something that uh, should come smoothly or at least in understanding. And uh, again, as we said, that risk aversion has, degree, uh, has various degrees. Some people are highly risk averse, some not so much. And it can be shown that a more risk averse investor with the same amount of wealth will require a higher uh, compensation or higher risk premium and essentially that higher risk premium magnitude reflects a personal preference, right? Because if you're more risk averse, of course you would need more of this sort of insurance or this risk premium to compensate for the added risk. And uh, that flows from our past discussions also. So I think to get this concept better, let's just go immediately to an example. So consider the, essentially the last example we've had is the same example except that we're gonna to start to do it in terms of rates of return. So consider again a utility function, uw is equal to l, l and w. Okay, so we have that function there. The current wealth is uh, 500,000 and he faces an investment in which he will receive 100,000 with a probability 0.5 or lose 50,000 with a probability of 0.5. And essentially, we can rewrite this problem as that of an individual with a current wealth who faces a 50-50% chance of winning 20% of his current wealth or losing 10% amount of his current wealth. Now, let's sort of break that down. How did we get 20 and how did we get 10? Well, again, the current wealth is 500,000. This is your W naught. Okay. Then you have, there are two possible scenarios, both with equal probability. One scenario is that uh, the investment will pan out and they will uh, stand to gain 100,000. And 100,000, right, if you divide 100,000 divided by 500,000, right, that's essentially um, uh, the, the expected rate of, uh, one of the expected rates of return. So that's gonna be um, potential return of 20%, right? Because 100 divided by 5, that's 20%, 0.2. Now, uh, but you could also stand to lose a certain amount of money. So this is 50,000. So that's 50,000 divided by 500,000. That's 10%. And that's minus 10% of the current wealth. So it's some proportion of the current wealth that you have. So we're given three tasks. The first one is to find the expected rate of return 
for the risky prospect. The second is the risk-free rate, finding that. And the third is the risk premium. Okay, so we can answer one, uh, one of them at a time. So let's start first with the expected uh, rate of return. Okay, so, or the expected return, essentially, in rate. So uh, the return, okay, the return on the gamble, on the gamble, as some percentage, percentage of uh, W naught can be viewed as, as we said, a random variable, variable R tilde with the PDF below. So if you notice, the, so again, we have two states of the world. So one where in the, you win, two if you lose. And again, both states have a probability of 0.5, right? And the value, value of uh, R tilde, if you win, as we said, is plus 20%, right? Or that's 0 0.20. And then if you lose, that's minus 10% or minus 0 0.10. Therefore, if you want to calculate the expected rate of return, you just apply a simple formula. So that's expected value, expected rate of return is equal to 0 0.5 times the value of R when you win, that's 0 0.20, right? Plus 0 0.5 times the value of R when you lose, that's minus 0 0.10, right? And that will be equal to 0 0.10. So the expected rate of return is equal to 0.10. Note that if you multiply 0.10 times the initial wealth, essentially that will equal the expected value of the payoff, right? Because it's, again, it's some proportion of the current wealth. So it would follow from that. Okay. Now, it, as, as, as you probably have guessed, since uh, the expected rate of return, right, is equal to 0.10, uh, what at times the, the initial wealth, right? which is 500,000, so 0 0.10 times 500,000, that's uh, just 50,000, right? Uh, so if you do that, right, the expected uh, uh, value for that, uh, that's gonna be the expected value of the payoff, that's 0 0.10 times 500,000, you get 50,000, and that's greater than zero, therefore this is not a fair gamble, not a fair gamble. Again, uh, just to, uh, recall, a fair gamble is when the expected value of the payoff is zero. In this case, it is not equal to zero. Therefore, you have a game that is not a fair gamble. Okay, moving on. So we have a, a, a second problem, which is to find the risk-free rate. So uh, as we said, okay, the risk-free rate, the, the certainty equivalent rate, or you refer to as the risk-free rate, has to satisfy the condition that the expected utility of W naught times one plus the uh, the risky rate is equal to the utility function evaluated at W naught times one plus the risk free rate. And essentially, we're gonna solve for these things, and then we're gonna see or and isolate out our F, right? Because that's what we want to find out. So let's just sort of solve for it. So again. We have two states of the world, the states, we have one where you win, okay, and then two if you lose, okay. Then you have probabilities for each, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Then you have a value of final wealth, right? So if you win the gamble, essentially it's gonna be one, okay, that's gonna be one plus 0.2 times W naught, because you gain 20%, right? As a proportion of your current wealth, and if you lose, it's one minus 0.1 W naught, right? And essentially this is equal to 1.2 W naught, and then this is equal to 0.9 W naught, right? So that's what it's equal to. Then what we do is we're gonna plug in those values to the utility function that we have. So this one will be um, the utility. So this is gonna be LN 1.2 W naught, then this is ln 0 0.9 w naught, right? And that's what we have there. Okay, so 
uh, again, what we can do is we need to find first, um, because we have this table here, we can now get this, which is your expected utility. So the expected utility, W0 times 1 plus R, right, that's participating in the gamble, is just going to be equal to 0 0.5 times LN 1.2 W0, right, plus 0 0.5 times LN 0 0.9 uh, w naught, right? So you have that there. Then um, essentially, uh, you, you can sort of solve for it from there. But uh, you also have this side of the equation, right? And uh, if you recall, right, uh, since this is just evaluated at utility, so then uh, you can sort of infer that this will be equal, okay? Because this is evaluated at utility, this is just going to be ln the thing inside, right? So this is w naught times um, one plus RF, right? So that's just gonna be that. Then all you need to do is since you have this part of the equation, right? This part of the equation is essentially this part. You also have this part of the equation, which is this part. You can solve for RF already because this is now some numeric value. So we can do that so we can isolate it out. So this is gonna be um, 0 0.5, um, essentially ln 1.2 W0 plus ln times 0 0.9 W0. So notice I just factored out the 0 0.5 and it should be equal to ln W0 times 1 plus RF, right? So I have that there. Then I can combine these two terms. I, I can combine the things inside by properties of logarithm, right? So because um, they're in addition, essentially it's the same as a multiplication inside. So I can multiply the things inside. So that's 1.2 times 0.9. 1.2 times 0.9, you get 1.08. Then W naught times W naught, that's W naught squared. W naught squared, right? And you get that. And that's equal to LN W naught times one plus RF. Then if you recall this term here, I can just uh, re-express it as this term here, right? Because this is again uh, a logarithm. This is ln 1.08 w naught squared raised to 0.5 equal to this ln term that we have here, w naught times one plus RF, right? So you have that there. Then in order for you to remove the ln, all you need to do is you just um, both sides to E. So that's E raised to LN 1.08 W naught squared raised to 0 0.5 equal to E raised to LN W naught times one plus RF. And all that does is that takes out the LN essentially. And you're gonna be left with 1.08 W naught squared raised to 0.5 equal to W naught times one plus RF, right? then what you can do is um, you, can, uh, uh, you can simplify this by dividing both sides by W0. You have a W0 there. And uh, note that it's going to be 1.08 raised to 0.5. And notice the W0 here is raised to 2. So 2 times 0.5 is 1 divided by that W0. The W0 on the left-hand side will cancel out and you're gonna be left with W naught times uh, one plus RF, right? And essentially, uh, if you solve for that, so it's going to be, um, uh, you have here, um, oh, sorry, we, we take out the W naught here also. Okay, so this is gonna be one plus RF. You have now, it's just gonna be 1.08 raised to 0 0.5 minus one equal to RF. And you're going to find that RF is equal to 0 0.0392 or 3.92%, right? So this is your risk-free rate. And if you notice, actually, uh, if you recall, the initial wealth that we have is 500,000, right? It's 500,000. If we multiply this by RF, so that's 500,000, times 0 0.0392, we're gonna end up, okay, we're gonna end up with 
uh, this number, which is 19,615.2423. And this number should look familiar in that this was actually the certainty equivalent we computed for before. So uh, let me jog your memory a bit and show you that indeed it was this number, right? So notice this was the certainty equivalent we computed for in the last video. And essentially it's that same number that we have here, except that when we solve for this number, we computed it in terms of its rate of return, right? So we have this one here. Okay, so that's that one here. So that's that 3.92%. Uh, and uh, the last problem is just to find the uh, the risky, uh, the, the sorry, the rate of return of the risk premium. And essentially, right, uh, for the third one, that's just pi r is equal to the expected value of the risky payoff. I'm sorry, the expected rate of return less the uh, risk-free rate. So this is going to be, you know that this is equal to 0 0.10. We solved that in number one. And in number two, this is minus 0 0.0392. And this is equal to 0 0.0108. And this is equal to 1.08%. And as before, if you multiply pi r times uh, w naught, this is equal to one, uh, 0 0.0108 times 500,000 and you're going to be left with 5,384.7577 and this is uh, your essentially your pi or your risk premium and again this is the same number that we got from the last video where we computed for this using their level values and indeed we did get that same value that we have there. So I hope you understand this sort of congruence between uh, using the rates of return and using the raw values and that they appro they, they'll lead you to the same answers that we've had previously. So with that, thank you for watching this video and staying uh, with, with us in this module. And in the next video, we're gonna go formally to our discussions on investment decisions using the expected utility criteria. So thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.